Today we are going to be making a video on the solo playability of New World because of this Reddit post. So thank you. Thank you, Burn SMH, for the Reddit post. I totally agree with you on it that there is solo playability and we will be going over some of that solo playability today. Anyway, the open beta is time for people that are not normally MMO players or that would never think about playing maybe this type of game. They can get on the hype. The open beta will be from the 9th to 12th. I mean, there are videos of this everywhere out on the internet. You get like three, four days of play time and you get to try it out. But this is just improv at this point. That's my opening. Can you play New World solo? I have friends ask this question. I saw that Reddit post by Burn SMH. <laughs> And I've watched the GDC talk. There was a GDC talk. I know it's on YouTube. I think it was released in 2018, but the talk may have been in 2011. It is called MMO. It is a massive multiplayer online video game. It's in the name. Does this mean people can't play it solo? No. <laughs> You're playing a massive multiplayer game. You can't play solo. It's in the title. It's in MMO, right? That's what people will say, but this is funny enough. It's just not true. Not everything in New World requires a group. It Don't be frightened by the community. Some may tell you how to play, but fuck them. You know, really just fuck them. No one really cares. You get to play the game how you want to play. What can you do solo though? Well, the first thing I want to get into with solo playability is going to be the gathering, crafting, and the market. You don't need another player to gather, refine, or craft at all in New World. Playing the market just requires someone to buy your shit, essentially. In the beta, there was a gold cap of about, I think it was 500,000 gold. I didn't reach that. I was not a rich bitch. We don't know if that will change on release, but most MMOs have gold caps in the first place. So a benefit is if you really niche down in your crafting, you can use the money you get to reinvest. You can reinvest that cold hard cash into other skills and say you're not a fan of gathering hemp since you know, it's illegal in your state. You can reinvest in that Kush market and level up another crafting skill. What the proceeds made off of the fiber dealer, really. Side tip, you can level up from professions and some quests unlock based on your profession levels. So solo play still looking kind of good. Make a day out of it. Cut down a tree, mine a quarry worth of ore, dominate a piece of the market. Turn down most of the volume when you're doing it too and turn up that SFX volume. I, trust me, you will have a great time listening to the sounds of New World. PVE, player versus environment. A good chunk of the NPCs are soloable. Be careful though, because out in the world there are some elites. There's like elite zones, there are elite mobs, and sometimes they do a lot of fucking damage. Technically, I think you can solo them, but the thing is, you're going to have a really rough time. So, good luck. New World's combat system is unique and engaging. Keeping you on your feet with dodging, running away, getting pissed off that you miss a dodge or you miss an attack on someone dodging, and finding cool and viable combos with weapon choices. On top of that, Settlements have job boards with soloable quests. Some of these quests give a great chunk of XP, by the way. Some of these include crafting materials for the settlement, culling creatures in the world that are most likely eating people, like alligators, and exploring hotspots with baddies to kill. You could do all of this solo. Let me get some sip. You can PvP, player versus player. Now, as a solo player, you're you're taking on a lot of, I don't know how to put it, unless you're fearless, your paranoia receptors will be going off all the time. There are groups of people that will be running around in these zones looking to just kill randomly flagged PvP players, and they'll be looking for other groups to go kill. But you can do it. There are PvP quests, as you're looking at right now, actually. Their PvE quests don't, you can do them and they give you the points that you need so you don't have to be flagged. That's a great thing for solo players. But there are also PvP quests and you have to be flagged for those, but they give more points. And you buy gear like you're seeing here. You can buy gear with the points you get. And if you're really feeling it, 
you can cause a war. If, if you're not afraid to talk and chat a little bit, even though you're playing solo, you can really cause a big all-out war. And when that's happening and there's groups fighting each other, hey, it's a lot more fun to just kind of pick them off, right? So that's still solo playability in my mind. New World gives you a choice on how to level. You can start skirmishes with other players, kill NPCs out in the world, quest, craft bomb materials that you can sell on the market. You can do town board quests that are really soloable, and these also level up your crafting. I think crafting and weapon mastery believe that you can even craft your end game weapons, your legendary weapons, and your armor almost entirely solo. It's going to take a long time, but if you put the time into it, you can craft it all solo. And if you have a niche part of the market, really you can just sell some of your stuff and get the gold for the other things to get your legendary weapons. So that, that can reduce time if you're playing it right. You could start massive PvP wars out in the world by just trying to convince people to go out. You know the, uh, the expression, build it and they will come? Well, if you get a group that's like, hey, anyone want to go out PvPing and you become a menace, the enemy factions will start gathering groups too because they're like oh cool that's an opportunity to have fun right and to to let it out at least for a couple of battles be you an introverted solo player or an extroverted solo player the game has something for you <laughs> uh without penalizing you for doing it your way we haven't even gotten into community engagement either because you have proximity voice chat and just think of the options are limitless not literally, but it's almost limitless. You can do a lot, like sing in town square or something. Playing an MMO alone is entirely okay. And playing with friends can be even more fun when you have your alone time. There's some people need their alone time, right? And this game gives you that opportunity. I love it. You could just walk out the door right now alone or with one friend and just take on the world. I just want to make sure I can make a video that shows people it's okay to play MMOs solo. And it's, I always think of it like this. You, you play a game that has an end. You don't really pick up those games again, or you may not pick them up again for a while, unless you're going to speed run them in some way. If I'm going to spend a lot of time in a game, or if I'm going to spend a lot of time gaming, wouldn't I want to spend a lot of time on the same game? I want other people to feel passionate. I don't want to force other people to play the game. I just want to reassure people. I don't want people to have doubts as a single player gamer or as a co-op gamer player. MMOs are not, are not scary. They're not. They're the same as most other games and they just have a lot of life to them. Whatever you play, I want to welcome you to Eternum. Even if you pick Marauders, we forgive you. If you do play, how do you want to play New World? Do you feel at home in New World? What are some things that drive you away from playing games like New World or the MMO genre in general? Let me know in the comments or come check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash which is the same as the YouTube and I'm actually doing this on Twitch right now, which is really weird because I'm live streaming on Twitch. Whatever. Thanks all, and I'll see you when the open beta releases, I guess.